suppose the crocodile waits to gobble up the zebra. The zebras are busy gobbling up the short grass. And they seem to be enjoying themselves. Look at all the mud caked on this one's hooves and legs. Doesn't look very recent, but you wonder if it's already crossed the river or if it's just from drinking at a nearby wallow. It would be fascinating to know exactly how far some of these individuals have traveled. It's not all the zebra that head back south into Tanzania at the end of this time in the Mara. Some will remain here, so this, these could have already been here the whole year. And I'm not sure how we'll ever get to the bottom of that. It's so different for me looking at these zebra compared to the ones that I was used to seeing up in central Kenya where I've spent the last year. I'm going to pull out my book and get a picture to show you the difference because it's quite remarkable. And in my opinion, the one in central Kenya is the most impressive of all the zebra species, or subspecies rather. Let's hope I have it in this book. Oh no. Oh yes, here we go. So, once you've taken a close look at those individuals, come across and have a look in my book over here. And you'll see the mighty Grevy zebra. It's the biggest of the zebra subspecies. And certainly the most donkey-like. Look at those big donkey-like ears. They even bray like a donkey. Their call is very similar to a donkey. Their stripes are very thin compared to the plain zebra. And they also end quite high up on the belly. And I'm going to ask Senza just to zoom in on the top right picture because it's my favorite angle of a gravy zebra. How's that for a hypnotizing bottom? Awesome. So yeah, interesting the different subspecies you get through Africa. Wonderful. Good afternoon, John. You're interested to know why some of these animals will decide to migrate and others will not in terms of the zebra and the wildebeest that remain here. It's a very good question, and I'm not too sure why. Um, something to remember is that there also used to be migrations that used to move north, further into Kenya. It was a much smaller migration of about, I think, 200,000 or so wildebeest and zebra. And that sadly no longer happens. But, you know, a lot has changed over the years. It's not exactly how it used to be. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, I guess you could maybe like it to us as humans. Some of us like doing things some way and other of us like doing things differently. So I guess it could just be a difference in personalities and desires of the zebra and the wildebeest. I wonder if some of them don't kind of semi-retire, you know, it's like, oh, four migrations is enough. I'm going to retire in the Mara or maybe retire in the Serengeti. Who knows? lovely lorry who would like to know what is the main species of zebra if we've just been looking at the grevy zebra which is a, a subspecies they all part of the zebra family 
but then you could say they're all cousins. So n not one of them is, is the main zebra. You just get some that occur more widely than others. <coughs> the Grevy zebra sadly is highly endangered. There's only about 2,000 left living in the wild on the planet, most of which are in central Kenya and Samburu. And there's a tiny little population in Ethiopia as well, I believe. Either Ethiopia or Sudan. I think it's actually Sudan. Whereas the, the plain zebra are a lot more widespread, but then you also get variations of them. But neither of them is, is a main, the main zebra, and it's the same with the giraffe. There's nine subspecies of giraffe, and neither one of them is the main one. Well, you'll be glad to know Jamie has made it out finally. She's been getting her radio rewired.